Okay. Hey, you're not going anywhere, are you, Rick? <laughs> Can you just say you're volunteering to stay at the... Yep. the, the, the Won't you? Okay. And make sure that Bill doesn't get in trouble. One, two, check one, two. That isn't going to happen. One, two, check, one, two. One, two, check, one, two. One, two, one, two, check, one, two. something like this? Why would we want to take the time to, to look at processes uh, such as a person who's sick, and a person who is passing, or, or someone, why would we be so morbid as to be thinking we want to think about bad things happening in that? Why not just go along and then when they happen, they, we, we uh, react to them? Well, the reason why we do that is it doesn't really work that way. Because quite often, and especially in the church, and the church is the healing body of Christ. The church is that one place in the world where a person should be able to come, be understood, be loved, and be cared for. That's the church. That's the nature of the church. The church did that better years ago than it does uh, now, because now sometimes we're more interested in other things and not interested in the main things. I always tell congregations that, that at any given time, 40% of the congregation is in some kind of grief. People, 40% of the people there are grieving over something, different levels, and some are grieving over very, very heavy things. So it's a, it's a, good, it's a good thing. Now, early in my ministry, I always sat apart for people, always a people person, always a nut. I told my, my wife, you know, when they... When you're, show, when you're by my coffin, you tell everybody that the sh this is just the shell of Bill that's here because the nut is in heaven. So I've always, always wanted to be close to people, always wanted to help people. I think that's why God called me into ministry in the first place. But early in my ministry, I had a, a couple, a, a lady that I loved very much, and she lost her husband. And I found myself sitting in her living room and she was very broken. It was very, very shortly after her husband had passed. And I found myself searching for what I was going to say to her and what, how I was going to be able to help her. And I really found out that within my life, even though I had gone through college and seminary, I wasn't really prepared for that moment to be able to help her with something that she really needed to do. And it was embarrassing to me. It hurt me. And oftentimes, pastors don't learn, so they don't go past the, well, God will take care of you, and God will keep you through, and God is faithful, you know, and those are all truths. But sometimes a person 
who is, you're there talking to them, sometimes they're looking for a little more help than that. Now my dream has always been that, that, uh, that in every church the pastors would all be there and you know, because I think they need it the most. Is Rick still here? If I told Rick, I wish he'd stay. Alright. But, uh, you know, it just doesn't happen that way. And you can just about see the heart of, you know, how things are by the interest that people have in these ministries. Now, my dream would be that every church would have ministries that would be sensitive to people's needs and have people who would be equipped to be able to go and be able to help somebody. To be able to come by their side and be able to help them. People who, like Dave, I mean, Dave's a wonderful example of a person who goes to nursing homes and has had a lot of experience helping people in nursing homes. As a matter of fact, you ought to see him when he's, when he's ministering to people, giving them communion and stuff like that, because he has a heart to do that. And I would really, my, my dream was always that that this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this seminar before we left to go out to uh, to Arizona because I'd like to see our church come up with a, a group of people who really desire to minister to people at different levels and different needs. And that's 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 my dream. Now, in some cases it has worked, and in some churches it has worked, and some, well, they feel, well, we're not big enough to do it. You don't have to be big to have one person with a heart who knows how to go to someone's house and minister to their needs. All you need is a willing person who's willing and able to do that. Now, I wondered what to do with that when I, my heart was, was really uh, burning within me to, because of my embarrassment in not knowing how to minister to that woman. And I had a habit, I don't think, since I hurt my knee I didn't as much, but I used to have a a prayer path that he used to go on every day. He used to travel down my prayer path. And one day, on my prayer path, the Lord laid on my heart, you got to start writing about this. And uh, I, you know, I never was much of a writer. As a matter of fact, I always, my boast is that I hate to read and I hate to write. I do, I hate to read and write. So, but I've written 15 books, but every book that I've written, there's been a, two drag marks between me and the will of God in doing it. But I started to search and I started to, to resource, to help myself. And I started to prepare myself for, for the ministry that, that God had for me. And my first book on this was called Walking Our Loved One Home. And incidentally, we have books uh, back there in, in, in the kids' room. <clears throat> and in the beginning of my book, I thought, I ran across this story about a little boy who uh, felt he wanted to go over and play over his friend's house. So he went over and, and you know, like kids, you get playing, you get having a good time, and you lose sight of the time, and before you know it, it was dark out. And he told his mom he'd be home, he'd be home before dark. So he, feeling he better get out of there pretty quickly, he, he threw his coat on and he went to the door, and just as he got to the door, there, a bolt of lightning came down, it was a storm coming, and it hit this, hit this big oak tree on the corner of the driveway. And it scared the life out of him. And so he came in and he said, well, maybe I'll wait for a little while. Waiting for him, waiting to, to get enough courage himself to be able to, uh, to go out. Well, he waited a little while longer and he went to, out again. And then all of a sudden the wind started and the rains came and he came back in and he said, well, maybe I won't, maybe I won't go yet. So he waited for 10 more minutes and then, then he put his coat on and he went to the door and lightning, there was lightning outside and, he, and he, he looked outside and all of a sudden he finished putting his coat on, said goodbyes and he walked out the door and, and they were all wondering where to get all this courage all of a 